Today, we are talking all things firearm mods. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Seven Days to Die offers a wide variety of firearms that you can use to slay them zombie jerks. From the single shot weapons like the blunderbuss and the hunting rifle, to the semi-automatic weapons like the pistol, the desert vulture, or the shotguns, to the burst weapon like the tactical assault rifle, or the fully automatic machine guns like the AK-47 and the M60. The firearm choices in this game are rather diverse. And on top of the diverse choice of firearms that this game offers, you also have a vast array of modifications that you can use to make your firearms even better. So today we're going to go through each of the firearm modifications available in Seven Days to Die. We'll discuss which weapons they can be installed in and exactly what the modification does. But before we touch on each of the individual modifications themselves, we do need to cover a few aspects of firearm modification. The first thing we need to cover is how many mod slots do certain weapons have available? Well, that factor is dependent on the quality of weapon that you are trying to modify. As you see here, I have six weapons rated one through six, and we're going to take a look at each of these categories of weapons to see how many mod slots they have available. So we'll start off with our quality one desert vulture. If we open up the modification window, we can take a closer look at this weapon. Now, it's important to point out that every single weapon in Seven Days to Die has one cosmetic slot. This slot you can fill with the random dies that are available in the game, and they basically just turn your weapon a different color. They don't offer you any offensive or defensive benefits. They're merely there for cosmetic value. Another important thing to point out from this screen are these little icons here. So you have like this little paint can icon next to the cosmetic slot, and then down here on the modifier slot, you have the two little gears right there. Those are the icons that signify which type of modification goes in which slot. The paint can is for cosmetics and the gears are for regular standard mods. Now if you take a look at our mods over here, you see the dies have the same paint can icon right here and the modifications have the gears. So that is one way to determine which modifications can go into which slots. Cosmetics with the paint can can only go in the cosmetic slots, and modifiers with the gears can go in the modifier slots. This screen is also important because it tells you which modifications can actually be used in that weapon. So we look at our, our dies here, all of our cosmetic dies, and you'll notice they all have the paint can icon, and it is flashing green. That tells you that any single one of these dies here can be installed on your weapon. And the same holds true for the modifiers. For instance, we take a look at this magazine extender mod, you'll see that the gears are flashing green. That tells you that this mod is usable on this weapon. However, if we take a look at the drum magazine mod, you'll see that the gears are gray. That tells you that this mod is not usable on this weapon. So if you ever have questions on whether or not a modification can be installed in your weapon, just go to the modification screen and take a look at the little icon in the top left corner corner of that modification. Green means go, gray means no. And this screen is also important because it tells you how many modification slots you have available. Quality one weapons have one modification slot available. And the same holds true for quality two. Quality two weapons have one mod slot available. Quality three weapons have two modifier slots available. As do quality four weapons. Quality five weapons like our pump shotgun here have three modifier slots available and quality six weapons have four modifier slots available. So just to break that down again, quality one and quality two have one mod slot available. Quality three and quality four have two mod slots available. Quality five has three mod slots available and quality six has four mod slots available. Now let's take a look at the individual mods themselves. I've broken these mods into different categories and we're going to go through each category one at a time. The first category we're going to cover are the sights and scopes in Seven Days to Die, starting with the laser sight mod. This modification helps with aiming quickly and increases accuracy
see when firing from the hip. Now here I have the laser sight mod installed on my Desert Vulture. One cool thing about this mod is it projects a laser dot on your weapon. You can kind of see it there on the screen. Let me get a little closer so it's a little brighter. You see that little laser dot? That tells you where your bullet is going to hit. So it's a great way to hip fire and still maintain accuracy. It gives you a visual representation of where your bullet is going to travel. Next up, we have the weapon flashlight mod. This modification adds a little light onto your weapon. So here we have the weapon flashlight mod installed on our pistol. And if we activate that mod, wow, that's bright. <laughs> it shines a light from your weapon. Now it's pretty bright in here, so you don't get the full effect of the actual mod itself, but you can definitely tell a difference when it's off and when it's on. It projects a pretty darn bright light that can illuminate quite a large area. Now, one thing I did want to mention, you cannot have a weapon flashlight mod and a laser sight mod on the same weapon. It is one or the other. The next modification we need to talk about is the reflex sight mod. This sight is designed for fast target acquisition and improves weapon handling. So here we have the reflex sight mod attached to our tactical assault rifle. And you'll notice when we aim, boom, once again, we have that little red laser sight reticle there. And you'll also notice that our actual aim has improved as well. Look at our crosshairs, pretty wide, no red dot that we can focus on. But once we aim, our crosshairs get much, much tighter. And we have that center red dot that will tell us where our bullet is going to travel. And the next three mods we want to talk about are the scopes. We have the two times scope mod, the four times scope mod, and the eight times scope mod. Now the scope mods are very, very interesting indeed. Only certain scopes can go on certain weapons. For instance, here we have the modification screen for our pistol. The pistol can only use the two times scope. It cannot use the four times scope or the eight times scope. So let's go ahead and install that two times scope mod and we'll take a look at what exactly this does. So there it is on our weapon. Let's aim at the door here. So you'll notice it zooms in and gives us a little bit closer look at our target. Now let's take a look at something like the tactical assault rifle. This weapon can receive either the two times scope or the four times scope. So let's install the four times scope and we will take a look at the difference between that one and the two times scope. So we have our four times scope mod installed on our tactical assault rifle. And again, we're gonna focus on the door. So if we aim, once again, it zooms in and gives us a little closer look at our target. However, the four times scope mod also has an additional zoom. Right now, we are looking at a two times zoom, but it also has the four times zoom available. So you can zoom in and it brings you even closer. And the last scope is the eight times scope. Now this scope can only be used on rifles, the hunting rifle, the marksman rifle, and the sniper rifle. So we'll go ahead and modify our sniper rifle here and we'll throw that eight times scope on there. And there we go. We've got that eight times scope installed on our sniper rifle. And once again, we're going to aim. Now again, originally it's set at two times zoom, but the eight times scope has the ability to zoom in two more times. So it has the two times zoom, the four times zoom, and the eight times zoom. So if we zoom in once, you'll notice we get a little closer. If we zoom in again, boom, we get even closer. So that is the eight times zoom. Now we're going to take a look at some universal firearm mods. These are mods that can go into every single firearm in the game. That's this set of mods right here, starting with the Crippleum mod. This mod gives you a 20% chance to cripple legs. Next up, we have the Hunter mod that gives you plus 100% damage to living beings. This modification doubles the damage to animals and fellow players. It does not work on zombies, however. And then we have the Rad Remover mod. This modification disables the regeneration ability of radiated zombies for 90 seconds. So once you shoot a zombie jerk with a firearm that has this mod installed, that radiation 
radiated zombie will no longer be able to regenerate health. This is a very useful mod, especially later on in the game when you start getting a whole bunch of radiated zombie jerks. Now one important thing to keep in mind with these mods, you cannot have the hunter mod and the rad remover mod on the same weapon. You have to choose, it's one or the other. You can install a crippleum mod and then one of these two, That that's fine. You just cannot have both the hunter mod and the rad remover mod on the same weapon at the same time. The next set of mods improve weapon handling and accuracy, starting with the foregrip mod. This improves handling and accuracy when firing weapons from the hip or while moving, as does the retracting stock mod. And then you have the bipod mod. This increases accuracy and handling when aiming. So the foregrip and retracting stock mod improve accuracy and handling while firing from the hip, and the bipod mod improves accuracy and handling when aiming your weapon. Now one important thing to keep in mind about the bipod mod, it can only be used on fully automatic machine guns and rifles. The foregrip mod and retracting stock mod are a little bit more flexible in the firearms that they can be used in. They can be used in pretty much every weapon except for pistols. So your regular pistol, your desert vulture, and your magnum, those cannot accept a foregrip or a retracting stock mod or the bipod mod. Next up, we have our two magazine extenders. We have the regular magazine extender mod that increases your magazine capacity. And then we have the drum magazine mod. The regular magazine extender mod can be installed in almost every single firearm. The only exceptions to that are single shot weapons like the hunting rifle and the blunderbuss or the 44 Magnum revolver. Every other firearm in Seven Days to Die can accept the magazine extender mod. The drum magazine mod, however, is a little bit more limiting. This mod can only go into fully automatic weapons, the tactical assault rifle, and the auto shotgun. Don't think you're going to be able to slap a drum magazine mod on your desert vulture. Unfortunately, it just does not accept that modification. Next up, we have our trigger group modifications. These mods will change the firing pattern for your weapon. There are three styles of fire rate in Seven Days to Die. Semi-automatic fire, which means you have to pull the trigger every single time you want to fire a shot. Burst fire, which means one pull of the trigger will fire a three round burst. And fully automatic, which means you hold down the trigger and the weapon keeps firing until the magazine has been exhausted. Now these three modifications can be installed in almost every firearm in Seven Days to Die. The only weapons that will not accept these mods are your single shot weapons like the hunting rifle and the blunderbuss, the 44 Magnum revolver, and the M60 machine gun. Those firearms will not accept these mods. It is also important to know what the default fire style is for the weapon that you're trying to modify. Most of the weapons in Seven Days to Die are semi-automatic weapons. This includes the pistol, the marksman rifle, the sniper rifle, the pump shotgun, the desert vulture, and even the auto shotgun. Those are all semi-automatic weapons. The tactical assault rifle is a default burst weapon. It will fire a three round burst by default. And the AK-47 and M60 are fully automatic weapons. They will continue to fire as long as you hold down the trigger until your magazine has been exhausted. So it is very important to know what style your weapon already has and then add the modification to adjust it accordingly. Another interesting thing to point out is, as I stated, the pistol's a semi-automatic weapon. However, you can still install the semi-automatic trigger group. It'll still go in there. You'll still get that uh, boost, the, the damage boost and the rounds per minute boost as well. It doesn't change anything as far as actually firing the weapon. It just gives you those extra benefits. And similarly, you can install the burst mod on the tactical assault rifle if you wish. Again, it won't change the fire pattern. It'll still fire off a three round burst just like it normally always does, but you do get that damage boost and the boost to the rounds per minute. Next up, we have our barrel modifications, starting with the barrel extender mod. This modification increases damage, range, and aimed accuracy, but makes the weapon more unwieldy when fired from the hip. Next up, we have the muzzle brake mod. This diverts the propellant gases to reduce 
reduce recoil. And the last barrel modification is the silencer. This modification greatly reduces the firing sound, but it also reduces maximum range and damage. Now it is important to point out that you can only have one barrel modification on your weapon at the same time. So for instance, I have my pistol here. If I install the barrel extender mod, I cannot install the muzzle brake or the silencer. And if I install the muzzle brake, I cannot install the barrel extender or the silencer. So you can only choose one of these three mods to have on your weapon. Now these three mods here are pretty much universal. You can, you can throw them on pretty much any firearm. The only caveat to that is the muzzle brake cannot be put on shotgun weapons. So the pump shotgun and the auto shotgun cannot receive the muzzle brake mod. Otherwise, they're pretty much universal. You can throw them on pretty much any firearm in seven days to die. That's right, folks. You can even throw a silencer on your auto shotgun. And the last group of modifications are these shotgun only modifications. These mods can only be installed in shotgun weapons. Starting off with the sawed off shotgun mod. This modification increases projectile spread. Next up, we have the shotgun duckbill mod. This modifies the spread to a horizontal pattern. So if we take a look at our pump shotgun here, you'll notice our little crosshairs. You see how it's uh, a nice circular pattern inside? That is the normal shotgun spread. But if we install our shotgun duckbill mod and then take a look at our weapon, you'll notice that the spread is a lot wider than it is tall. It has flattened out that spread and made it very, very horizontal in nature. Completely changes the spread of those pellets being fired from your shotgun. The next modification is the shotgun choke mod. This mod actually tightens the shotgun spread. And the last mod is the shotgun tube extender mod. This increases the magazine capacity for pump shotguns by three shells. This mod is only good for the pump shotgun. It can't be used on any other firearm. Now, real quick, I did want to go back and demonstrate the difference between the choke mod and the sawed off shotgun mod. Let's start off with our regular unmodified pump shotgun. No mods are installed and take a look at our crosshairs there. Okay. Take a look at that. See how wide it is. See how spread out it is. Now let's go ahead and install the choke mod. And there you have it, folks. You see how much smaller, how tighter that is to the original unmodified shotgun. It tightens that spread quite a bit as opposed to the sawed off shotgun mod, which expands or widens the spread quite a bit. You'll notice a sizable difference in our crosshairs. Very, very different from the choke mod, the unmodded pump shotgun, and the sawed off shotgun mod. Now, the last thing I want to touch base on is crafting these modifications. Almost every single firearm modification in the game can be crafted once you find the schematic for that specific modification. However, there are a couple that do not have schematics. Instead, they have specific books that you have to read in order to unlock the ability to craft that mod. The first one is the drum magazine mod. The ability to craft this mod can only be unlocked if you read Automatic Weapons Handbook Volume 4. And the second mod that fits in this category is the shotgun tube extender mod. This can only be crafted once you have read Shotgun Messiah Volume 6. All of the other firearm modifications require a schematic. So find the books, find the schematics, and you will unlock the ability to craft these mods. Now I will admit, folks, the firearm modifications in this game can be a little confusing. It can be difficult to decipher which mods can go with which weapon. Hopefully this guide has helped to make that process a little bit easier to decipher. But once you do understand what modifications can go with which weapons, you can actually come up with some very, very awesome and effective modification combinations. The addition of modifications to your firearm can make that weapon extremely, extremely deadly to the zombie jerks. And again, every player is different. We have our own unique play styles that we prefer. So I would recommend experimenting. Try the different mods on different weapons and see which ones you like best. The customization factor in Seven Days to Die is endless. And that that streak holds true with firearm modifications. I hope you folks have found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did and you'd like to see more, I've created a very special playlist of equipment tutorials that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin.
Seven saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Seven's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.